Hey friends, welcome back to Simply Home and Harvest. I'm Jen. If you're new here, welcome and happy new year. This is my first video of 2023 and I've got a lot planned for this year, but first we're gonna start out in probably my favorite place, the kitchen. There's a lot going on here. You probably can see in the background, I'm transitioning the home from Christmas to winter decor. So I've still got boxes out and a lot going on with that. And also I've been sick for the last few days. So my voice probably sounds a little crunchy, but we're just gonna carry on because we got things to do. Last year I watched a lot of the videos of different YouTubers that participated in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. I'm probably not as seasoned as the rest of the participants in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. I may not be a full in participator like some of those that are in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge, but I am going to do my best to shop my pantry, to shop my food storage, and use what we have to create our meals. I'm also going to use the months of January and February to get everything canned that I've got in the freezer that needs to be canned. There were some tomatoes we didn't get to, so we need to go ahead and turn those into some pizza sauce. Uh, we've got some broth to make, we have some soups to make, and there are a lot of items that are down in our food storage, a lot of canned goods that I wanna go ahead and use so that when we get to garden season 2023, because we are just weeks away now from starting our seeds and all the things, so, I want to go ahead and you know make room for all of that that will be coming in. That also includes a lot of frozen vegetables that we have and frozen meats and things in our freezer that we want to get used up. So I won't be staying out of the grocery store completely, though that would be a beautiful goal to have in the future because we still will need to go for a lot of our perishable items, for our dairy, for our fruits and vegetables that we want to have fresh on hand. So we are going to do our best to use what we have these next couple of months. Now, I have not been to the grocery store since the week before Christmas. So I'm not able to do a very hard start into this challenge because we are out of a lot of things. But tonight, in an effort of keeping to our challenge, we are going to make a dinner using some leftover ham that we had from our Christmas dinner this past weekend. And what I decided to do is a Pioneer Woman recipe. I absolutely love the Pioneer Woman. I have a lot of her cookbooks and recipes, and I just, I have this, I have this thing for cookbooks. I love checking them out at the library. I love collecting them. And I love to look through them, and occasionally I will use a recipe that's in the cookbook, but a lot of times I end up finding my recipes online, so I thought this year, what a shame. I need to put some of those recipes in these cookbooks to use. Now, I know you've seen me cook out of a cookbook. I wanna put forth a little more effort to use some of these recipes in the cookbooks that I already have. So what I decided to do was I took three recipes that we could use, Pioneer Woman recipes, that contained ham because we wanna use our leftover ham. I let the family vote for what they wanted to have tonight. And so their choices included a macaroni and cheese, like a macaroni, macaroni cheese and ham that was one of their choices and then a um ham and scallop potato bake that i've actually made of hers before that's really good and then there were these waffle ham hash browns well it was unanimous y'all all three my husband and my children they voted for the waffle hash brown ham hash browns so i've never made this and i don't have the most dependable of waffle irons so in the spirit of the pantry challenge and using what we have and the appliance challenge of using what we have, we're gonna use this waffle iron and we're gonna hope for the best. I've also got Alex kind of won out because he, he wanted the macaroni and cheese too, he was torn, but I'm going to make macaroni and cheese. So I've got that going in the crock pot and then I'm gonna put some green beans with it. Oh, and we're gonna use some of our broccoli that we froze from this summer's garden and we're gonna use that in the hash browns as well waffle hash browns. Okay, so come on with me. Let's give it a try. So this is the cookbook that we're using, the Come and Get It Pioneer Woman cookbook. And like I said, I've got, I think I have all but her last one. So we're going to try the waffle iron, waffle iron hash browns. So that's what they're supposed to look like. 
right here on this page. And as always, there's some noise in the kitchen. So I've got this burner that's making some weird noise back here, but I've got some green beans that are cooking on the stove to go along with tonight's dinner. And then I've got our macaroni and cheese in the crock pot in the background. I will link a video down below if you are interested in that recipe because I have already uh, made a video on that. All right, so we're gonna start out with a 30 ounce bag of frozen shredded hash browns. Now these hash browns were frozen this morning and I went ahead and thawed them on the counter. And so, or you could do it overnight in the fridge. So now we've got our hash browns thawed and we wanna squeeze all the liquid out of them and that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so it's said to start with half of the hash browns and use about three or four paper towels to squeeze all the liquid liquid out. So we'll just work in batches here. Now I just took these over to the sink and drained all the water out. And I'm just gonna get these emptied into a bowl. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other half of hash browns. Now the reason we do this is if you've ever worked with frozen hash browns, you know they hold a lot of liquid. And you want to get all that liquid out so that you'll get a crispier hash brown because if you don't you're going to end up with soggy hash browns and i don't know if you're like me but i'm not a fan of soggy hash browns i'd much rather have them on the crispy side all right like i said i took them all over to the sink drained the water out so you did miss that part but so i wouldn't have to keep moving my tripod I just decided I would just tell you about it instead of showing you. It's hard to take y'all everywhere I go. Okay, went ahead and got our waffle iron out and we're gonna let that heat up. I just have one of those. I think this is a Belgian waffle iron, but it's one that you put your waffle in and then you flip it over and if you hold your mouth right, it works. <laughs> and then it cooks and then this green light is supposed to go off and tell us it's ready and then or maybe the green light comes on. I don't know. The green light's on already and there's nothing in it. So, like I said, this is, you know, it's been used a lot. It's a well-loved appliance in our home. So, we'll just use what we have and do the best we can. But we're going to get half a stick of butter melted. So, I'm going to get that in the microwave. All right. We're going to drizzle our four tablespoons of butter over our potatoes. And it's hot. So I have the assistance of a towel here. So I'm gonna get that mixed together. Now we're gonna add half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And y'all know I always tell you that when I try a new recipe for the first time that I don't like to add anything to it. I like to make it just like the recipe states. And then if I ever try it again, I can add something different. But I don't always follow my own rules. <laughs> so. Tonight I'm breaking those rules and I'm going to add, because I didn't really think black pepper was enough seasoning for this, so I'm going to add our garlic and herb seasoning that we get from Aldi, which y'all know is my favorite. I'm gonna add some of that. I add it to my hash browns and my potatoes normally when I cook them. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that in. I know we won't go wrong with that decision. All right, now I'm gonna set this to the side now we're gonna get our ham prepped that's going to go into our waffle hash. Now we had a lot of ham left over from a Christmas dinner that we had with my family this weekend. So I'm just gonna get some of this into our food processor and see if we can get it chopped up and save ourselves some time. One of our pieces didn't get chopped up, but for the most part, the rest did that did a pretty good job of getting all of that chopped for us and we only need half a cup so i think we'll be just fine with that <clears throat> all right first thing we want to do is coat our waffle iron with some cooking spray all right so this is add a half a cup but that waffle iron is a little different than ours it says you should start to hear them sizzle when you put them on and i hear the sizzle so what you do is a layer of your hash browns This is a little bit different than making waffles. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that I get this filled up. And this thing has a tendency to tilt, so we don't want it to dump everything out on the counter. Okay. 
Next, we're gonna add our ham mixture on top of this. This is like a potato cake, I guess, kind of, or a take on a potato cake, maybe. And then we have about one cup of shredded cheese here that we're gonna sprinkle on top. But first, I'm gonna add our, well, these were frozen. They're still a little slightly frozen. I put them in the fridge to thaw a little bit. But this is some of our broccoli that we grew in the garden that we froze chopped. I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top for a, little bit of a vegetable touch there. You know, it is the first of the year, so we're trying to get all those extra veggies into, making smart choices. All right, I don't wanna to put too much on here because we gotta put another layer of potatoes back on. Well, you know, the first one you always learn on, right? All right, so then a layer of potatoes goes on top. Just don't want to overstuff it for the first one. So I'm going to stop there and loading it. Oh yeah, see, I don't know if it's gonna work out because I don't even know if I can get it closed and turned. Hmm. Okay, maybe so. All right. Yay, we did it. All right, so we're gonna let that cook for a minute or two. We'll come and we'll come back and see how we did. Well, y'all. I am sad to say, I believe we have a fail on our hands with this waffle hash brown. I don't think we're gonna get a waffle hash brown. I think we're going to have to go with a plan B. Let me show you why. Not all waffle irons are created equal. When I told y'all this one was old and not very dependable and I should have talked better about it because it didn't behave very well. <laughs> so this is what we have after about seven or eight minutes of it being in here. So it's cooking it, but very slowly. So I'm gonna keep this one in and see it's like separated up there. I'm gonna keep this one in here and just let it do its thing. But I think I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a, another version of this over on our cast iron skillet on the stove and see if we can save dinner because I've got about 45 minutes before I need to be out of here and I would put pull out my, I have like a small little waffle maker that makes waffles into heart shapes, but that would literally take me the next three hours. So I'm gonna have to move over to the stove top and see if we can save this. Um, but now we know that the Pioneer Woman has a special waffle iron that she does this on. It is not this one. All right, we're gonna try. I've got our oil heating and our cast iron skillet. And I'm gonna use a metal biscuit cutter, and this might not be a good idea, I don't know, but we're gonna see if that will help us make these into like little potato cakes, I guess. Make them a little bit neater anyway. aren't even on anymore and I don't think it's heating up it got to a certain point and then the thing just shut down so I knew it was getting old but I think we did it in it said what is this foreign substance this is not a waffle and it just quit so 
I don't know if I should leave it on here or not. Because <laughs> I don't think it's going to cook anymore. So I think once I finish with our potato cakes that we make, I'll just dump all this into the skillet and we'll just have a little bit of a hash brown hash, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's what maybe happened. Maybe it wasn't style of waffle iron. Maybe it was just this waffle iron just decided to quit working. So anyway, sad story, but we will carry on. We will figure this out. Okay, I successfully flipped one over, but I didn't record that. So let's see if I can get the others turned here. Because there's no binder, this is becoming quite a challenge. <laughs> All right, wasn't quite as graceful on that one. All right, give this one a try. Feeling better about this one. Aha. All right, so, of course the key to this is to really let them brown on that one side before you turn them. But like I was saying, they don't have a binder. So if you've ever made like zucchini fritters or even potato cakes, you normally have a binder, I think, like an egg or something to kind of hold everything together. I might be wrong, but I think that's right. Anyway, we'll just do the best we can and this is what happens. You know, not everything always works out like you plan, but that's just life. And you have to learn to roll with the punches and figure out another way. So this is tonight's way. Not as healthy of a version <laughs> as I was hoping for, but dinner will be on the table. And we're going to enjoy our green beans that already cooked so let me show you those that so our green beans are already ready for us they're trying to get it where the shadow is on like you see our green beans are already cooked and our macaroni and cheese is ready and we've got some leftover sweet potato casserole from our christmas dinner that we're going to put with this so and then we got the broccoli in here so you know we made a healthy effort tonight but we did shop our pantry and our food storage, and we used some of our garden produce, and so I think that's a win. I'm going to take it as a win. broccoli because so I was trying to make it healthy and in the waffle iron it would have been really healthy but that's what we have like it's plugged in you see the lights not on I know not as healthy a dinner as I wanted back well, oh well oh well you win some <laughs> so you might have to use a fork here try it out it says you can serve these with ketchup or Whatever dipping sauce you want. I, oh, okay. He was able to pick it up. I think it would be better with like sour cream or ranch or something. Like a potato cake. Yeah. That's what, well, that's what these are now. They are potato cakes. But they were supposed to be waffle hash browns. They were supposed to look like this. <laughs> uh -huh. Because they were going to be in the waffle iron. But 
Oh, well. I don't like the broccoli in it. Okay. Well, there is one without broccoli. Oh, well. We tried. Oh, no. Great. Okay. Other than the broccoli, he said it's great. But that's because he doesn't like broccoli, so. Let's try to be healthy, Alex. All right, so Tim's going to take over <laughs> finish cooking these. He didn't do as good job of flipping them as I did. Whatever. <laughs> breakfast is my jam. Yeah, this looks more like breakfast. Oh, well. Well, it's the next day. I actually just sat down and edited that video. And y'all, my hair <laughs> in that video <laughs> was such a mess. But did I mention that I've been sick? And obviously wasn't paying attention. I guess all I was thinking was, I need to get it out of my face so I can cook this meal and get on with the night. Um, I did not go to Bible study with it looking like that, though. And it doesn't look much better today. It's a rainy mess, as you can see. And I'm getting ready to head out and get those groceries that I was talking to you about that I haven't picked up in a while. It's been since before Christmas. But I wanted to go ahead and confirm that the waffle iron is dead. It's dead. I plugged it up again this morning and no light, nothing. So it served us well for many, many years. And I do not want to blame that recipe on the Pioneer Woman or anything else except for this iron. I think if it was working properly, that would have that wouldn't have been a dinner fail. That would have been a success. And we might try it again. But for now, we're gonna take this one off and we will just go ahead and get ourselves another waffle iron because we needed one and you know those things happen right but dinner was good we were able to save dinner and Ella enjoyed it too when she got home it just wasn't what we intended so we might like I said one day we might try those hash brown waffle hash browns again but I didn't want that to discourage you from actually trying that recipe for yourself so I am going to link the actual recipe in the description box below so that maybe you can give it a try and let me know how it works out for you all right so we're going to carry on with this day and I will see you in the next one so until next time friends remember to live simply use what you have even if it breaks right in the middle of it and enjoy the moments you've been given bye for now